Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review in partnership with Wig Pro. This is Heidi by Wig Pro in the color 23-60-R8. It's a rooted gray and it's a curly, curly wig that is actually more budget friendly. And I'll talk all about that in this video. I'll tell you about the wig. I'll show you this color inside and outside. So even if this particular style isn't your style, maybe another style in this color would be. So I will cover color as well. If you want to know more, stick around. I would like to thank Wig Pro for sending me Heidi so that I could show everyone. It has been a long time since I have reviewed a Wig Pro wig. I think it's almost probably been two years since I've shown a Wig Pro wig. So I was really excited when they reached out and asked if I'd like to partner on a review. Now, if you would like to purchase Wig Pro, there are a number of retailers out there that carry this style. I would suggest that you go to Google and you search Wig Pro Heidi and you should be able to find a retailer and you can price shop that way. Just so you know, I did check and not all retailers carry this, but a bunch of them do. So let's take a look at this one from all sides. Now, I did mention in the beginning that this is more budget friendly. Because this has a basic cap and no frills to it, it does run just over $100. If you can find a 30% off coupon, which many retailers carry regularly, you can get this one for under $100. I would definitely price shop on that because I think it's an adorable style for those of you who like short, sassy, curly. It does come in a number of colors and so if you can snag it for under $100 that would be amazing. Now I really like shorter synthetic wigs for their longevity. I really do think that because this one is shorter it is going to last you some time. It'll probably outlast potentially by double a uh, longer piece that rubs up on your clothing. So think about that as you're choosing your styles and if you're looking for the most bang for your buck, shorter styles will really give that to you. Now, like I mentioned, this has a basic cap so there is no monofilament part, but I think they did a great job on the parting space on this. You really can't see visible permatease. This piece does not have much permatease, hardly any as a matter of fact. And because it doesn't have any mono features, you can actually part this anywhere you want theoretically, but it does come with a left going over to the right part and I do believe they cut this based on that part. So I just wanted to mention that because often people, uh, sometimes when you get a, a basic cap wig, your expectation is that you can change the part on that to suit you, but I really think the style was formulated around a left going over to the right part, so I'm not sure how well that would work. I really appreciate that you can't really see visible permatees on this. I think there are two reasons for that. Number one, it doesn't have much, like I said. Number two, because this is rooted. Now, I know grays don't look like natural gray when there's a root, there's like the rare person whose hair turns gray and then it starts to get a little darker again at the root. That's not common, but this color with no root on a basic cap like this, my suspicion is you'd be able to see visible permatease and then you would have to deal with that. Rooted colors on basic cap wigs really can mimic a part better and hide the fact that there is no mono part there. And you can see that right now. Now, like I said, there's hardly any permatease. I think I said it three times now. <laughs> there is some, there's always some in a basic cap wig. You really can't have a basic cap wig with no permatease because then there's no way to hide the cap. And so there's just the tiniest bit of crimpy fibers. But when I put my hands in here, especially back here, I, I touch cap, so I'm not feeling any poofy pillowy permatease. It's not giving it a ton of volume on the top. You are seeing a little bit of volume here on the sides, mainly because of this style. It is layered and it's very, very curly. Let's take a look at this cap so you can see what I mean by a basic cap. No frills, soft material right here. We've got open ear tabs, you can see those holes. You can actually put glasses through those if you are struggling with ear tabs and glasses. 
we've got a not really an extended nape and we do have velcro adjusters the rest of this is open wefted you know this is a very light wig and between that the low permatease and a lot of the open wefting on this I think this is going to be a really cool wig to wear if you're looking for something cool to wear in the summer as cool as wigs really can be you're, you know, you do have to recognize you're wearing something on your head. It's a question I get all the time. Are wigs hot? Well, they can be. It depends on the person. And some wigs are hotter than others. See, it's really easy to put on. The one caution I'll give you is it's not super out of the box. These curls are incredibly well formed. I did take a wide tooth comb to this. I shook it out. I took a wide tooth comb. I even sprayed it with a little bit of water. I actually... Not only did I do an unboxing with this one, but I spent some time in my bathroom and my camera talking about how I work with a wig like this out of the box. I will tack that video on the end. So you know what? I'm not sure if I'll tack that video on the end. If I don't, I promise I'll release it as a tip Tuesday. So keep your eye out for that. And if you're watching this video far down the line and I already have that Tip Tuesday out. You will find it linked in the description. I, I just think it might do better as a standalone for people who just want help with out of the box. So we'll see. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be as surprised as I am what I end up doing. All right, so we talked about permatees. The volume is low. The density is low. It's kind of, I'd say it's, it's low just under moderate. So it's not the lowest density, but it's fairly low. It's really light. The only thing that you might be concerned about, maybe depending on your style preference, is there is definitely an A-line difference on mine. I looked online to see if this was how the style was supposed to be. The pictures that I could find do make this side look slightly longer, but not to the extent that mine is. This is quite a bit longer. So, if you don't like that, but you like everything else about this style, what you can do is take a scissors or even a thinning razor, which I have a ton of videos showing you how to use a thinning razor, to trim bangs, to trim face framing layers. It's really easy to use and makes cutting hair so much easier than scissors if you're not good at it. And I would just take that thinning razor and I would just trim off a little bit of this very end. Because this is curly, it's going to be very forgiving. You are not going to have to be perfect about that trimming. It's gonna spring right back up. So I just wanna mention that if you love everything else about this style, but this, that is so easy to fix, I know you can do it. All right, so volume, and we talked about all of that. This is fairly tuckable, but because it's so curly, it's really not going to look great tucked, but if you want to figure out a way to tuck it, you can. I really love headbands, and this right here, you might need to deal with that right there as well. Um, your piece might not hang in your face on the side there as much as mine does. When I do get it swept over to the side, it kind of will stay once I get it situated. A little bobby pin will really help that. You could take this, twist this a little, bobby pin it, and keep that out of your face. And headbands are so fun with these type of curly wigs because they can really help to change up the style. And all you have to do is kind of throw it on a range you could take and you could take a bobby pin and pin this to the side if you wanted to get that up off your face and then you could leave a little bit of this down you can put a little bit of it up it's just so fun to play with headbands and wigs it's one of my favorite things to do I paused the camera there because I needed to take a breath I've been talking so fast trying to make this video not a super long one I took a look in the mirror and I thought oh my gosh that is darling I mean look how cute that looks with a headband you guys, I just want to encourage you, style your wigs if you struggle with them. You would be so surprised to find how many wigs you don't feel you can wear become a favorite when you style them. I have had, in the very beginning of my wig wearing journey, I had a wig similar to this and I was really uncomfortable with it. It was a hairstyle that I wasn't used to. There were just a lot of things I wasn't used to as a lifelong hair loss sufferer, almost lifelong. And as soon as I put it in an updo, as soon as I put some clips in it, as soon as I put a bobby a uh, uh, headband <laughs> on it, I suddenly loved that wig. It became a favorite of mine. So I just want to encourage you, if you're struggling, 
please know there's so many things you can do to make wigs wearable and make them your own. I have tons of videos showing that, but I really don't want you to feel lost and hopeless on this wig wearing journey. I think there's a lot that you can do. All right, let's talk about color. Went off on a soapbox there, but those of you who follow me know that's me. So, color. This color is 23 slash 60 slash R8. So it's a rooted chestnut brown. We've got this rooted chestnut brown. We have a platinum white base and a little bit of champagne highlights. I like to talk about it when it's off my head so I can look at it as I'm demonstrating. This really pulls to me like a silver. Every now and then you get a little bit of a darker color like right in there. That's what they're referring to as the champagne highlights, but it's really subtle. It's not like there's, uh, it looks really natural. Aside from the root, this looks like somebody's naturally graying hair because you have multiple tones in your hair. It's rare that somebody has pure white hair. I know some of you do, but that, you know, I would say when someone starts to gray, they don't go from, you know, brown or blonde straight to gray. They kind of go through an evolution. And so this is reminding me of sort of that silvery gray color that many people have. I don't know how to reconcile the root if you are someone who has gray hair and you're looking for a gray to mimic your style. I do have a video where I show you how to lighten a root with root touch-up powder. It will not eliminate it, but it will make it a little less dark. I'll make sure that video is uh, linked in the description. Boy, I'm having trouble with my words today. Uh, it's linked in the description so that you can go watch it if that would be beneficial to you. You can also do that with any wig that has a little bit dark on top, but I did show it with a wig that was sort of a gray color, so hopefully that'll help. All right, everybody, let's get outside so you can see this color outside. Thanks once again to Wig Pro for sending me this wig so I could show all my wig sisters. I just love showing you guys all different things. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. And here's this color outside. Looks like I got a strand, a stray. Cannot wait to open that right there. It's looking kind of yucky. So don't mind our dirty after the winter pool cover. I think it's a really pretty color, I really do. One more close up. All right friends, thanks for watching. Thank you.